So this is what we're all about on Behind the Screens. And this is where we are taking to the air on 97.1 FM. Are we doing what is good, uh, Becca? Do you think I, it's good? I, I love that you are raising awareness and that you are speaking out um, oh, about, yes. um, about domestic abuse because it's a really important topic that for far too long has been hidden oh. and kept behind closed doors. So the fact that it's being spoken about is, is a fantastic thing because you can't fix a problem until you acknowledge it exists. Thank you very much. So before we go any further, uh, Becca is with me. She's from Restored UK. And she's going to introduce herself and tell us more about her work so far and her involvement in advocating against domestic abuse and sexual violence. Becca, welcome to the show today. Thank you for having me. Yes, so shall I just launch in and explain who I am? So my name is Becca. My name's Becca and I work for a Christian charity actually called Restored. And we work to speak up about violence against women in all its forms. Um, but we specifically work um, and focus in on understanding domestic abuse because that's the form of gender-based violence that most women or women are most likely to experience, you know, being hurt by somebody who's meant to love you. Um, and so we work very specifically with to equip the church um, to understand, recognise um, domestic abuse, to understand that it actually happens within its, its walls um, and to be able to support survivors and provide a place of welcome for them and to stand against abuse. Um, and then we have a support network that is um, very specifically for Christian women, actually, because we recognise that people of faith often face additional barriers in finding freedom because their understanding of their faith um, can complicate their understanding of their marriage and how it should be and whether it's okay to leave and, and in all manner of things. And so we um, work to support Christians in particular to navigate some of those um, difficult places and to find a community where they can find support. But we also work in a broader sense um, with something called the Faith and Violence Against Women Coalition, which is a combination of, of organisations, Muslim, Jewish, um, and from all different religions working together and raising our voices to help parliament understand, actually the government to understand and secular organisations to understand that responding to people, responding to survivors needs a spiritual element when those people have faith and because otherwise actually they find it very difficult to access support. Thank you, Becky. That's a good one. That's a, you're doing a very good job. And, um, I'm very sure that um, you are making a lot of impact in your space of an uh, area of calling. And so um, you said in your introduction, you are specifically out there to support people of faith. Yeah. So have you, um, especially Christian faith, so have you had um, situations and encounters where you actually had people how do you normally reach people? How do you normally reach those that you support? How do they find you? How do, they, how do, you, how do you find them? Uh, so that is a good question because it's hard. Um, we began as a very small charity. We've got a greater reach now, but it, it, finding the people who need to find us is tricky. Um, but we, we work online predominantly. So we have a website, restored-uk dot org um, where people can find support from us and and the truth is we offer support to anybody who comes you don't have to be a christian to have support with us but we but because of our speciality it means that for christians will be particularly helpful um, but we so we advertise on um you know we do google adverts so that if people are, so, are, are typing in looking for support christian abuse or support as domestic abuse they'll they'll find us and um, so we, we reach out that way we try and do a lot on radio things like this so that people can hear and um, and as as christians we do quite a lot of work through the church as well so we try and get along to christian festivals and to get in front of people where they might stumble upon us if they should need us um, and on top of that we work we have a we, we've got an ever-growing um, bunch of supporters who we ask to highlight and, and keep hold of some of our information so they can pass it on if they want to in fact we've got one resource which i will highlight right now 
um, which is fantastic for any survivor of domestic abuse, no matter their faith or if they've got none at all. Um, and it's a survivor's handbook and we provide this free to any survivor of domestic abuse. And we ask our supporters to buy a copy and be ready to give it away themselves because that helps us to give away more. Um, but this book is a fantastic resource. The first section deals with the practicalities of leaving an abuser. You know, the, the finances, the housing, the children, the legal aspects, all of that. The middle section is about your emotional well-being and how to recover in yourself. Um, and the last section is a section that is geared at Christians in particular, because it looks at some of the theology that can be confusing around some of those issues. But the first two sections of this book are relevant to absolutely anybody and you can get that on our website as well so i would recommend that to anybody as a fantastic resource um, to, to buy if you're not a survivor and give away but if you are a survivor you can find the details on our website and we'll send you a copy of that thank you very much so um because you kept mentioning the issue of the, the emotional well-being of uh, some of these uh, victims or survivors so, and uh, as a run up to the mental health awareness uh, season for this year, for instance, do you see your services uh, as really, really key and relevant to those who are survivors? Do you want to tell us a bit about that? Yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, I think for some survivors, even if they leave their abuser, there's this feeling like everything should be okay now. But the truth is, that kind of damage takes a long time to heal. And I think one of the most important things you can do sometimes is say, it's, it's okay not to be okay. Like we want to help you get better, but you don't need to feel, I mean, I've spoken to women who feel guilty that they're not all right now. And I think, gosh, no, it took years to take away your sense of self, your sense of worth, your sense of value. And it will take probably years to put that back in place again. It takes a long time. And it takes for people to be really invested in you. And I think for people who haven't been through abuse, there can be sometimes a lack of patience and thinking, well, you should know, it's all okay now, what, what's wrong with you? So I think this understanding that there are massive mental health issues that go alongside um, domestic abuse uh, for victims and survivors is really, really important. And then choosing, so if we, you know, if we want to support people, we need to be ready to be in it for the long haul, to be in it to, you know stand with them on the journey and go you know i haven't got all the answers but I'll, i'm not leaving you i'll be here with you as we work through it and know that there will be good days and there will be bad days but that actually slowly but surely we can get better and better but i think yeah, recognizing the mental health aspect of recovery is really important and we work very hard we're working harder and harder now to be part of that solution for survivors so in terms thank you in terms of their goods who um probably one of the weak links of them being abused is the fact that they don't they actually economically depend on their perpetrators and then they now found themselves being able to escape and then the first thing they begin to think about is survival yeah and so how do you help such people because i imagine after this uh, pandemic situation people that find themselves in such situations it could be like a double tragedy for them yeah. Initially, they don't actually have the means of independently living on their own. Secondly, they have been suffering the hand of one perpetrator or abuser or the other. Now they've been able to bolt away from that environment. What will you advise such people? And what will you advise those who are in fear of not leaving because they don't know how to? How do we survive if they leave? Yeah, I'd say I understand. It's re it's a it's a it's a it's part of the whole coercive control to make you financially dependent on them because then it, it adds to the fear of leaving. Um, but actually, that's when you really do need to get in touch with local services because it's your local services that will help you to overcome those things. It's your local services that will make sure that you've got the right benefits in place. It's your local services that that have to now find with, with new domestic abuse act in you know back in earlier on in the year. Your local um, council now has to find you housing. That's that they're legally obliged to to accommodate you. And it's your local services that will be able to put the support in place to enable you to work out how to live independently yourself. But but it, it isn't easy and that, you know, there's a reality to that. There, there isn't a, you know, a magic answer to this one, but it's your local services who are, who are best placed to help you with that. And by contacting that domestic abuse helpline, they'll help you to get in touch with the right people.